A couple months ago, I made a video specifically talking about process lasso, and I talked about the process priority, IO priority, memory priority, but most importantly and relevant to this video is CPU affinity. That essentially means you can assign specific cores or threads to different processes in an attempt to isolate them from each other to improve their own individual performance on those cores. I've been doing a lot of that CPU affinity work on my PC Sherpa Live and actually on PC Sherpa as well. And today I want to make a quick video just to help you guys with specifically figuring out what type of CPU affinity setup you should be using depending on what type of CPU you have. There's sort of four main different branches of CPU uh, in a sense that I've sort of designated, and we'll we'll talk about them as we as we keep going. Something very important to note, though, before following these steps, is that in your Tarkov, if you're following what I'm doing, and you you know you play Escape from Tarkov, in here, make sure that you have only use physical cores disabled, because if you're using this with Process Lasso to schedule things, you may run into a bit of a hiccup uh, as far as constantly setting the affinity goes. So just to make sure you can set only use physical cores inside of task manager or not task manager process lasso instead don't use this if you're going to be using process lasso just disable hyper threading through that instead for tarkov if that's what you're planning on doing in general though in process lasso here the point is not to say for example disable hyper threading for tarkov that's not the main reason we're doing this that's a common tweak you see all around but instead instead of specifically relying on that solely we can take other tasks that are running in the background, Chrome, Discord, other, I don't know, random stuff you have launched in the background. And then I, my install is pretty clean, so I don't have that much. But in general, you want to be able to swap those tasks away from wherever the game is getting bottlenecked on thread wise so that the game has as much headroom on that thread as possible. Do keep in mind, though, if you have any other questions, be sure to hop in the discord it is linked below first link in the description and if you have any questions about what you what you should set specifically for your own affinity please do let me know in there or you can type in the comments or come on to my streams i have them on sunday at 1 30 p.m cst that is for pc sherpa live and i also have some of my normal streams on friday at 6 30 p.m cst with more to come probably soon enough. So yeah, make sure you check those out. And without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. I don't want to waste your time. Now you'll see a lot when I'm helping people will specifically sort out tasks away from Tarkov and have Tarkov be on specific threads. It depends on the CPU. So there's four different branches of CPU that I want to cover. And I don't know why I'm calling them branches, but you'll see what I mean. CPUs with six or less cores are going to be in the first sort of bucket. Uh, the second one is going to be for eight core CPUs that have hyper threading. This is with hyper threading, by the way, all of these. The third one is Intel 12th, 13th and 14th gen, specifically those parts that have E cores like I do. And then the fourth case will be for those of you who have an AMD CPU that has 12 or 16 cores. So we're talking the 3900X, 3950X and the subsequent evolutions after that everything will be timestamped below to make it pretty easy for you to find so the first thing if you have six or less cores and especially if they're also not hyper threaded this is probably not for you to be honest there's not much you can do if you don't have the extra room to sort out different tasks because if you put like say discord on a single core and especially if it's not hyper threaded that is going to be painful i will tell you that so trying to isolate tasks to be on a single core for CPUs that don't have a lot of headroom with that is going to be a little bit rough. The only tweak that I would possibly recommend if you have stuff running in the background that needs the headroom is to take your Tarkov BXE and simply go to CPU Affinity and make sure you go to Always and then go to here. And then once this menu pulls up, the only tweak that may help you with consistency's sake is removing the first CPU. Now, depending on if you're hyper threaded or not, will determine if you need to check or I should say uncheck one or two of these. If you know you have a hyper-threaded CPU, you uncheck the first two because these are each thread. But if you do not have a hyper-threaded CPU, you just uncheck the first one because that means each one of these is a core. Another quick way to check too to see if you have hyper-threading and probably the easiest way is just in your task manager. So if you open that up real quick, inside of here in the performance tab, you just have to, if you're at this screen, hit more details and then performance. And in here, in the CPU tab, you should see cores and logical processors. For most CPUs, if you see 
that logical processors is two times the amount of cores, that means that you have hyper threading. The only reason the numbers are different for me is because I'm on 13th gen, we have the E cores, and so some cores have hyper threading and some don't, but don't worry about that. If the cores equal the amount of logical processors, then you don't. Simple as that. Two of these equals one core because two threads go to a core. So for example, zero and one are a core on my hyper-threaded i5 13600K. Two and three are the same thing as well. Now what that means in terms of performance is that if there's any tasks that are running on these, specifically browsers or Windows tasks, can sometimes schedule stuff to be on that first thread and unchecking that for the game's sake may improve your performance, though if you're on, say, a quad core, that'll be pretty painful either way. This tweak could actually be done for everybody, regardless if you want to actually try it out to take it off the first thread. But for higher tier CPUs down the line, there's some more specific things we'll get into. Speaking of that, the next branch is eight core CPUs. So I'm talking if you've got a 5800X 3D, 7800X 3D, 7700X, um, is there any Intel equivalents? I guess 10900, no, 11900K, stuff like that, right? If you have uh, similar CPUs to that and you have eight cores, it's sort of like an interesting place to be because you sort of have enough headroom to branch stuff out without having much performance impact. You just have to make sure what you're doing. So for example, uh, if you're trying to schedule tasks away from the game, please excuse the fact that I only have six cores here, but I'll, I'll show you an example. Say for instance, that each one of these is still a hyper-threaded core, even if it says E here, right? Just for demonstration's sake. So if I want Tarkov to say, avoid CPU zero and one, I could do that and then still have, I'll check these so those aren't, aren't ignore these. I would still have then seven hyper-threaded cores right here, which would mean I would be pretty much set. And then I could do the same thing I talked about before. Whereas for instance, with Logitech G Hub, I've set that to be on the first core only. Let me actually select all those. You can see that right here in Affinity. I have that selected to the first core. It's not in the menu. Regardless, I have that set to the first core. And then that way, if for example, if this task ever runs anything, that will be completely independent of what Tarkov is doing. With an eight core CPU, you probably have room to set background tasks to be on two cores. So for example, with a hyper-threaded eight core processor, you can set this to, and I'll clear this, set this to zero, one, two, and three, and this will be the first two cores on your CPU. And then subsequently, right, if you were having Tarkov to be on the rest, it would be four through 15 right here, these. And you won't see the E on these, by the way, because the E is efficiency specifically for me. But this is the only way I can get this menu to show up, so that's why I'm showing it to you like this. It depends what tasks you move to those one or two cores in the front, if it actually benefits you at all. It depends on what you have in the background, like I've said at the beginning, so keep that in mind. And with that, if you are past this and you have more cores to spare than eight, you are sort of in a really good spot, because then you actually have a lot more headroom to mess around. The first situation that would have that is, say, if you have a CPU like mine that has both performance cores that are hyper-threaded and efficiency cores that are not hyper-threaded. The efficiency cores are really great at handling background tasks, and because of that, you can sort of sort out tasks that you don't want to interfere by simply putting them on the E cores like I have, and I'll show you that in a second. The CPUs that would be affected by this are, like I said, the Intel 12th? What the fuck? The 12th, 14th, I can't count. The 12th, 13th, and 14th gen. Oh my goodness. But those CPUs are really great if you have those E cores to spare because like, for example, here with Chrome, right? I'm going to actually pull up Chrome and uh, let's see it. Let me pull up a quick YouTube tab or something, right? And then once I pull that up and start playing a video on it, then you'll see that that usage, you can actually see right now on the E cores is starting to bump up a little bit. And that, for example, if you're, say, pulling up a Tarkov wiki or pulling up a map and the advertisements are playing in the background, uh, those advertisements and other shit that's happening in the browser won't directly affect your gameplay because now it's on these cores and the game never gets bottlenecked on the E cores unless you're forcing it to run on those like some kind of sicko. So to show you, if you're on the Intel 12th or 13th generation or 14th and you have E cores to spare, this is what I do. So for example, for Chrome, I'll, I already have it set for this. So let's actually find a task that I'll be able to set it to independently. Let's do Logitech Geo again, since it's the easiest one that I can see and I don't have much other bloat on here. So say for this, right? Let's say I want to get rid of G Hub and have it to be on the E cores instead. I can, 
a shift click from the top to the bottom of these tasks. So for example, with Discord as well, if you want to switch that, you shift, cl you click on the top and shift click at the bottom to select them all. So I can do that right here. Once you have all these selected, you can go to Affinity and click on Always and then select CPU Affinity. And right in here, this is where you can set it to be just the E-Cores. And you should have a button that's automatically set set to just e cores so you can just click that and it'll set it automatically if not you can check it automatically to just be on those e cores once that's done you just hit okay and just like that it's set correctly then if you were really worried about tarkov running anything on the e cores you could always set tarkov to specifically be on the p cores and let me clear this for to be correct here i didn't see any performance benefit with this in fact it was a slight reduction in performance when i disabled my e-cores but if you're really worried about that and you have a lot of stuff running on the e-cores that's getting high enough usage to where you're almost maxing out the e-cores then you may want to uncheck those otherwise feel free to just leave it set to all of these as seen right here if i could aim there we go so yeah that's for intel 12th, 13th, and 14th generation as far as affinity goes. And the final one is those of you, like I said earlier, who have say a 3900X or a 3950X, a AMD CPU that has 12 or 16 cores. Their architecture makes it so that six or eight of those cores, depending on which CPU you have, it's six for 900 and eight for 950, are on one CCD. So say for example, if you have 12 cores, six of those are on one part of the CPU die, and six of those other cores are on the other part of the CPU die. And there's an interlink between them that allows them to compute in unison, but it takes some time for that data to transmit between the two CCDs. You can think of it like two cities, and they're doing the same job at the same time. The workers need to cross the road, and that travel time is a pain in the ass. So to cut down on that travel time, why not have the workers stay in the same city, to improve your overall performance. The easiest way to do that is by setting your affinity for Tarkov to be either on the first or the second CCD. Now, the only time where this would actually matter, depending on what CCD you set it at, is if you have a 7900X3D or a 7950X3D as one of those CCDs has cache, the first one and the second one does not. So if you have those CPUs set it to be the first CCD and not the second, so it should be CCD zero. And to do that, it's the same process that we've been talking about for the rest of the video. So you right click, go to CPU affinity, go to always, and then select the CPU affinity to be on the first CCD. S since you know that you have 12 or 16 cores, setting it to the first CCD is simple. Divide that number by two. All of your cores are hyper-threaded on those CPUs. So you know that two cores here, two CPUs, it says, are one core. So this is a thread, this is a thread, and then these two threads go to one core. So this is a core right here, or this is a core right here. So say hypothetically, if you have a 3900X, you wanna select the first six CPU threads. So let me actually clear this and I'll show you an example. If I wanted to select the first six CPU cores, not threads, the first six CPU cores, you want to go and check the first 12 because it's a hyper-threaded CPU, unless you manually disabled that. I'll do that for you real quick. So this is right here, me checking the first six cores, and then it should look something like this. If you're on a 3950X, ignore the naming scheme here. This is just because I'm on an Intel CPU. You would check the first eight if you want to be on the first CCD like this. For other background tasks that you don't want to interfere with Tarkov, you'd simply set them to be on the second CCD. So for example, if you're on a 3900X, for instance, you have six cores in the second one, so it's just the, the last six cores. If I clear this out right here, you should stretch on the six core system from 12 to 23. That's 12 threads, which means six cores. If you are on a 16 core AMD CPU, then that would switch and obviously would be on the second set of eight cores. So that would be from 16 to 31. Hope that was an easy way for you to understand that. I know it's a bit complicated, but at the end of the day, it's just setting Tarkov to the first six or eight and then setting the rest of your tasks to the other six or eight. But now that those different things are done, this is the important part of the video that I will make sure to flag as important in the timestamps if I actually remember. There's a couple quick tips to help you schedule things and so you don't schedule the wrong things the wrong way. In general, if you want to select a whole group of tasks from the top to the bottom, let's say with Chrome here, you would simply click on the top here and then shift click at the bottom and everything in that selection will be, or everything between those two will be selected. So say, right, if I'm up here with this Chrome, I'd go all the way down if I want to change Chrome and I shift click on that, 
and everything is selected there. Then you can change the affinity like that without having to manually go to each. But let's say there's a bunch of different tasks that I wanted to change the scheduling of, but they're in different places. To do that, you would simply control click. So I'm gonna, let's say I want to change this, don't. But let's say I want to change this, and I want to change this. You control click on this, control click, control click, control left click, I should say, control left click, etc. right? And I can click through and select all the different ones that I want without having it deselect the previous ones, right? And then I could select, set the affinity from there. Now, specifically in that menu, I'm going to open and get Chrome back up here one second. Let's say if I want to change Chrome here, go into the CPU affinity, go to always and select the CPU affinity. Let's say there's a specific preset that I wanted to save to set this stuff easier. You can actually do that so that you don't have to go inside of this menu every single time, but you want to select whichever ones you want to select. So let's say, let's say I want this to be on my e course. So I would I would set it to be on the e-course. I have a button to do that, but I'll just do it manually, right? So you can see hypothetically, right? If I didn't have a button, I would have this preset saved. Let's actually make it unique. So we'll put, we'll take away two of the e-course here. And let's say I want to save this and this will be for like background tasks I don't really care about, right? So I can hit save named affinity right down here. And uh, let's name it background tasks that I don't care about. And there we go. So now I can have that saved. I hit OK there. And now I've got that selected CPU affinity. And if I wanted to set this now that it's saved, I'll hit OK here just to have that set. But if I ever wanted to set it to this again, I could go select all of them again, CPU affinity, always, and then select background tasks that I don't care about. And then it'll automatically apply that unique profile to all of the tasks that you have selected, which can be really useful instead of having to go in the menu and manually check all of them. You can do the same thing if you're setting to zero or one, right? So you just go in here, let's make one more profile, select CPU affinity. I'm going to clear this. And then this will be just on the first core. Uh, so I checked zero and one there for the first core, since this is a hyper-threaded CPU again, right? I'll save name affinity. And then in here, Let's name this first core and then OK. And then I can apply Chrome to specifically be on the first core. So I'll just do that real quick so you can see that. And then if I wanted to select it from here, I just right click affinity always first core right there. And it's done. Really easy to make profiles to set on the fly. And again, like I've been saying, this is what Process Lasso was really meant to do and meant to do well. That's pretty much all you need to know about setting your affinities correctly. And if you have any comments or questions about it, make sure to either say, leave them in the comments or let me know on Discord or ask me in my streams. I am around and I'll try to answer whatever questions you have. And we have a great community on Discord that'll answer for me a lot of the time and sometimes better because I know a lot over there. But yeah, I hope this helped you figure out your case specifically with your own CPU and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know the timestamp looks a little weird. People are going to be asking, why is he recording this about four hours before he posted it? And that's just because I didn't like how it turned out the first time. And so I'm last minute redoing it to make it better in the end. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you all for the support. I really appreciate it. And yeah, for now, I will see you guys on Friday for the stream and on Sunday for PC Sherpa Live. This is Clem. Walking out. Later. Mm -hmm.